Welcome to a separate additional lecture that I had promised you in your previous class to discuss differential screw jack. This is the last lifting machine in your list of lifting machines. So in order to understand how a differential screw jack works, first of all, let me show you an image. which shows three different components of a differential screw jack. It's a screw jack in the first place. So this is the first component, which is basically a platform which will help to raise a weight, just like a normal screw jack, which is connected with a threaded part, a screw part. So we will name it as component number one and SA. The second component is a special component which has both internal and external threads and it has a collar and a handle along with that and this is where you will apply your external effort and just as in the case of a simple screw jack the motion of the lever along with the second component that is sb sb represents screw number b sa represents screw number a so both these component, component number one and component number two, they are both threaded components. The only difference being that the first component is a solid part and contains only external threads. And the second component is a hollow part. You can see the dotted line coming down from here. See, this is the dotted line, which shows that it is hollow inside. And it has got internal threads also. So what is going to happen is when you mate these two parts, this component number one, which has external threads is going to go inside component number two. It is going to go inside component number two and the internal threads of component two are going to mate with the external components of external threads of component number one. And just like a simple nut and bolt, the motion of component number one will be upwards or downwards depending on the type of rotation you give to component number one or component number two see the rotation can be enabled in both ways either you hold component number one and prevent it from rotating and rotate only component number two in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction now depending on the direction of rotation your thread uh, threaded part or component number one will either rise up or go down now, please remember, you have decided to hold component number one in such a way so that it is prevented from rotation and you are rotating only component number two. Now, when component number two is rotated and one is held in place, you will see that essentially you will be obtaining a downward or an upward motion of component number one, just like a threaded bolt moves inside a nut. Okay. And again, as you can see, the second component or the uh, part that we are naming as S suffix B has got external threads also. We have got external threads also. One Okay. Component number two has external threads too. Now component number two is going to go inside component number three. Your component number three is your same basic stand or the nut part that you saw in your previous lifting machine. That is the simple screw jack. So this part that you are seeing is the same thing that we are going to use as component number three in our differential screw jack. So see, 
the difference between a simple screw jack and a differential screw jack is that in a simple screw jack you only have these two components the stand which is acting as a nut and this lever attached part which acts as a screw so this screw goes inside this nut and when you rotate the lever this whole screw part is either going to be lifted upwards or either it is going to move downwards but now in a differential screw jack the difference is that there are two threaded components the component 1 can go inside component 2 and component 2 and component 1 both can go inside component 3 and now the rotation of this differential screw jack is enabled in such a way so that you are going to hold the stand in place that means it is prevented from rotation so i am going to write it as hold so component number 3 is prevented from rotation component number 2 is rotated with the help of the lever this is rotated with the help of a lever component number 2 is again held in place so you are going to hold component number 1 in such a way so that it cannot rotate so the rotating part is only component number 2 now what will happen if you rotate component number 2 in the clockwise direction two things are going to happen okay the first thing that is going to happen is that the second component as it rotates inside component number 3 it is going to rise upwards but at the same time since the threads of component number 1 and component number 2 are in the same direction internally and externally when component number 2 is uh, is rotated and component number 1 is held then component number 1 will go downwards so simultaneously while component number 2 is rising upwards component number 1 will go downwards so there will be a relative motion so whatever weight you are placing over this suppose there is a weight which is kept over the platform which you want to lift it there is a weight here this weight will experience a relative motion it will rise upwards due to the upward motion of component number 2 and at the same time it will go downwards with the downward motion of component number 1 now whether the weight will be eventually moving downwards or upwards will depend upon which motion is greater if the amount of distance moved by component number 2 is greater than the amount of distance moved by component number 1 downwards then eventually the weight is going to be lifted upwards because the upward motion of 2 is greater than the downward motion of 1 but on the other hand if the downward motion of 1 is greater than the upward motion of 2 then the weight will be eventually gradually moving in the downward direction just have a look at this video so that you can get a good idea of this thing now see the green part which is rotating is actually the component number 2 that we are showing here okay so component number 2 in this figure is actually the green part shown in the video the yellow stem shown is the blue part shown in the figure okay now please see that the blue part is not moving okay or the yellow part in this image is not being rotated see this step look at this step the only rotating part is the green part okay now out of this video i have created an image to make it look like your differential screw jack now see the lever has been attached to the green component okay and the green component itself is going inside the blue component the blue component is your component number 3 the green component is your component number 2 and the yellow component is your component number 1 now please look at the video once again one minute
okay look at the video once again when the green part is made to rotate now look at this image the green part will be made to rotate with the help of the lever okay when the green part is made to rotate the green part is also moving downwards and the yellow part is also moving downwards on the other hand when the green part is moving upwards the yellow part is also moving upwards but look at the relative motion between the green and yellow parts over this part as you can see the threaded portion of yellow part is being exposed or it is is being get the green part why is this happening because the threaded part of the yellow piece is going inside the hollow green part so you can easily imagine that there are internal threads inside the green part into which the yellow threads are getting meshed now you see that actually the overall motion of the yellow piece is in the same direction as that of the green piece so when the green piece is moving downwards the yellow piece is also moving downwards and when the green piece is moving upwards as you can see it now the yellow piece is also moving upwards but look at the rate of climbing of these two things the green part is moving faster whether moving upwards or downwards but at the same time the top of the yellow part is not moving at the same speed because there is relative motion between these two so actually what is happening is the yellow part is gradually going inside the green part but the green part is climbing upwards at a faster rate so eventually there are two motions which are negating each other the upward climb of the green part and the downward climb of the yellow part and since the upward climb of the green part is greater than the downward climb of the yellow part eventually the top of the yellow part will show a relative motion in the same direction as that of the green part i hope that this explanation is quite clear to you with the help of this video and with the help of this image so eventually what is happening is when you rotate this lever and you hold piece number 1 or component number 1 from rotation and you hold component number 3 also from rotation only the second component is rotated then two things happen i will explain once again component number 2 will start climbing upwards because it is threaded into the third portion at the same time component number 1 will start climbing downwards because this is also meshing with the same threads of the in same internal threads of the second portion and since the downward travel of yellow component or component number 1 is lesser than the upward travel of the second component the overall effect is that the top of the component number 1 will gradually be seen climbing upwards and this is how the lifting of weight is achieved now you might also be wondering at some time that why do we need so complicated a mechanism when we could have achieved the same thing with a simple screw jack as i explained to you in the previous lecture in a simple screw jack the velocity ratio is limited because of the mating of only two components let us have a look at the simple screw jack this is a simple screw jack now see there are only two components this component and this component now when this component is rotated this will either climb upwards or downwards so the velocity ratio is determined only by the meshing between these two components but in a differential screw jack you have two traveling components and since the total upward travel of the weight will be very very slow because of the relative motion of these two pieces so our velocity ratio is actually increased to a very higher value what is the eventual meaning of increasing the velocity value of velocity ratio velocity ratio if allowed to increase means the ratio of y by x is increasing that means y is getting more and more larger compared to x only then will the velocity ratio increase to higher and higher values now what is the eventual meaning of y being greater than x if y becomes extremely greater than x that means you have to rotate this lever say 15 to 20 times before you can see some 1 to 2 cm climb of the total weight kept on this platform 
this is the meaning of a large velocity ratio so if a machine or a lifting machine has a very very high velocity ratio you should understand it in such a way that you will have to make a lot of distance motion using your effort in order to obtain a small motion of the load and if the velocity ratio is less that means with a small motion of your effort arm you will be able to achieve almost similar motion of your weight arm but as i told you and made you understand in in previous lecture if your velocity ratio is very very high that means the amount of p that you have to spend will be very very less the only disadvantage is the duration for which you have to apply this p or the length over which you have to apply this p will become larger and larger that is the only disadvantage but the amount of p will get very significantly reduced this is the advantage so this is the working of a screw jack now in order to understand that the derivation of velocity ratio and mechanical advantage let us go to the notes section here once again now you are looking at a two dimensional image since you have understood the three dimensional aspect so this is component number 1 this handle and this threaded part is component number 2 so please remember component number 1 is going inside component number 2 and component number 2 is going inside component number 3 and component number 3 is a stand a stand which has internal threads here it has internal threads in this cylindrical part and this is where the external threads of component number 2 are going inside component number 2 has internal threads inside also and that is where the external threads of component number 1 are going so component number 2 has internal threads like this it has internal threads also and that is where component number 1 is going inside and mating with them okay so now what we want to do is develop a relationship for velocity ratio now since velocity ratio is distance moved by effort y divided by distance moved by load x y is the same thing if you remember i'll show you yeah look at this image y is your 2 pi l okay because the lever has a length of l and you are rotating it by a circumferential distance of 2 pi into l so y whether it is a simple screw jack or a differential screw jack it does not make any difference y remains the same 2 pi l so we come back here take your y as simply 2 pi l now there are two components please remember in our differential screw jack here screw a and screw b screw a is going inside screw b okay so let us say that the pitch of this threaded part on screw a is pa and let us say that the pitch of the external threads of component b or screw b are p b now you all already know what is the meaning of a pitch and i have already told you that in screw jacks you never try to increase the number of turns of or increase the number of threads of a screw so you will already be having only single threaded screws everywhere so in a single threaded screw in one rotation sorry this is not rotated this is rotated in one rotation of the lever screw b will execute one complete revolution okay and in one complete revolution of screw b screw b will climb upwards by a distance of pb but at the same time you have to remember that in one complete revolution screw a is not climbing upwards it is actually climbing downwards but since again one complete revolution of the mating part sb has been completed so you can say that the downward travel of sa will be equal to pa pa in this case being the same equivalent of one lead one value of lead so lead of the screw is equal to pitch 
for single threaded lead is equal to twice of pitch for double threaded and lead is equal to thrice of pitch for triple threaded screws and since we are having all over single threaded only so the lead of the screws is equal to single pitch so if the pitch of the first component is pa and the pitch of the second component is pb what will be the effective upward travel of this platform in one revolution of the lever in one revolution of the lever component b or sb will climb upward by a distance of pb at the same time in one revolution component number a or sa will climb downward by a vertical distance of pa and since i have to achieve an upward climb of this platform i will always design these two components in such a way so that the pitch of b is greater than pitch of a so now remember that upward climb is pb and downward climb is pa so what is the net upward climb it will be net upward climb will be pb minus pa so this will be the effective distance by which this platform or the weight will climb upwards in one revolution of the lever so this is nothing but your x or the distance traveled by your load so we will go back again and in the place of x we simply place pb minus pa so this expression is your velocity ratio 2 pi l upon pb minus pa now obviously if you want to go further with the derivations you can separately derive the value of pitch of b and pitch of a and develop them into different uh, trigonometric expressions as we did in the previous one but textbooks do not propose much complicated derivations for differential screw jack you simply express the travel of the load with the help of the difference of pitches of component 1 and component 2 that's all so if if somebody asks you in one rotation of the handle and you have a differential screw jack by how much distance will the load travel upwards you simply say that if the pitch of the larger nut or larger bolt is sb sorry pb and the pitch of the thinner bolt is pa then pb minus pa will be equal to the distance upward distance traveled by the load w that's all okay so eventually you have uh, this velocity ratio as 2 pi l by pb minus pa mechanical advantage in this case is again taken as the general expression only w by p so efficiency has it is mechanical advantage by velocity ratio you achieve it by dividing w by p with the expression of velocity ratio and this is the expression for efficiency so with this we come to the conclusion of all the lifting machines and i hope that uh, the differential screw jack is also clearly understood by you and if there is any doubts either in the working or in the derivation or in the concept of x being pb minus pa or anything any any doubt related with this please feel free to give me a call or contact me on my mobile number through whatsapp or anything we can come to a personal google meeting and i will clear up all your doubts and if no communication is received from your side i will rest assured that this additional lecture that i have prepared for you was sufficient for your understanding so the derivation part is only this much if somebody asks you the derivation of a uh, differential screw jack you just write this much part that is given in your notes you write what is pb you write what is pa develop velocity ratio develop mechanical advantage develop efficiency that's it only this much part needs to be written a whole lot of explanation and uh, such complicated diagrams are not required the only diagram that you need to draw in your exams is this two dimensional simple image as shown here for the differential screw jack and for simple screw jack okay so with this we will stop the lecture and i hope that everything was made clear to you thank you